I really do love this job. Today I'm at Heller in Redditch. I'm at their headquarters. It's their global competence centre. They're building 200 machines a year from here, would you believe? I'm going to meet with David Evans, who's the operations manager, to find out more. David, if you could uh, give us a few minutes of your time then. Um, now, I mentioned in the opening to this video that Heller are manufacturing from here around about 200 machines a year. Now, in order to, in order to do that, you need to, to be very efficient. And recently, you've installed this Strothman flow line system, haven't you? What, what, what's we it have. done for you? Well, our original assembly process of this type of machine was purely a mechanical assembly process on another flow line that we have here. Um, where we finish the machine mechanically, lift it off the line and put it in a separate part of the factory to complete the process. Now, so what we're building here is horizontal machining centres, yes, isn't it? It's, it your, is, it's, yeah. your, it's your horizontal line. Yes. And just importantly, to bring it out, uh, uh, you know, an early point in this video, this is station one, isn't it? This is where it is. what the, the casting comes here. It's already got the linear rails on. Is that right? That's correct. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. We do. We do all of what we call the machine bed. We do all of the bed assembly work offline in another area. So the bed completely assembled is brought to this carriage, our station one, and then the initial assembly process starts from this point. So what do you do on station one? What's this gentleman doing here? It looks like he's, okay. is he putting the ro a rotary axis on this, it? This, this is Owen and he's fitting our set in place, which goes onto the machine. And principally the majority of the individual assembled groups are assembled in station one. So we have the machine column, we have the setting place, the pallet changer, and the energy unit, which is the main source of all the hydraulics, pneumatics. Well, I suppose that once, once that's all done here, it, with it being a flow line, the idea is to balance it so that as you move from this station or this particular machine moves from this station to the next, the next one's moving to the next and, 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 and on, goes the, yes. on goes the kind of mission, really. But in order to do that, to balance it, how, how do you go about doing that? Is, it, is this on here for a day or two days or three okay. days? The first thing you have to do is you have to measure the total work required in the assembly process. The principal assembly of the machine is carried out over four stations. So we've evaluated over time the amount of work required in those four stations and then divided that into what we call even cycles or tacts as we call them so that we have a two day tact on station one, a two day tact on station two, same on station three and same on station four. And that process is a balancing process between either the manpower capacity or the actual physical work involved in it. Let's go and have a look at station two. Okay. So, station two, we're only a few feet from station one, aren't we? But we are. what happens here, the, the, the Strathman lifts up and moves, or the, Strothman? The, the Strothman carriage is raised pneumatically, and we then use a pneumatic mover to push the carriage along on these rails that you can see in the floor here and that's moved along from station to station. When we get to the actual station location, which is defined here on the floor, then the pneumatic air pressure is taken out of the system and the carriage slowly lowers back down to the floor. So how long does it take to get from station one to station two? Is it just a matter of minutes? About two minutes. Very quick then. Okay, so once we're on station two, what's, what's happening here? What's going okay. on? This? So, so on station two, the difference between one and two is that we've got most of the basic assembled groups already fitted now. At this stage, we start to fit some of the ancillary equipment, start to put some of the pipe work in, and the, and the main uh, part of the process of station two is to fix the electrical cabinet. Now, the electrical cabinet at this moment in time is located on the other side of the gangway behind you, uh, but that will be lifted over with the main crane, and that will be fitted on here as well, and then we'll start to run some of the cables around. And you can see the stage that we get to at the end of station two when you look at station three. Let's do that. Let's move on to station three. Uh, I've got a few points that, uh, that I'm going to uh, bring up now, which I'm sure will be on other people's lips. I mean, the, okay. the first one would be what happens if, if there's a roadblock? What happens if something happens on station two and station one's finished and, you know, station three is now waiting? It happens. We don't, we don't live in a perfect world. Um, we have a couple of things that we can do. First of all, we have overtime, which we can use to compensate but as we all know over time is lost revenue to the business. Uh, we also operate a small group of people on a late shift and we use those people to 
almost firefight where we've had a problem during the course of the day or where we're perhaps a little bit behind schedule. Um, and the other thing that we have had to do in severe cases is physically take the machine out of the line completely and then put it somewhere else in the factory and finish the assembly process mechanically there. But I suppose when you do the math you're still gaining on an efficiency otherwise you wouldn't be doing it. Yes, so are, you, you yeah. gain a lot, you might lose a little bit maybe but you gain a lot more. Okay station three what's happening here looks to me like tool, tool, tool change you going on? Station three electrical cabinet has already been fitted the major group that is fitted on station three there are two that is the tool magazine and tool changer assembly that you can see there and also the main machine guarding is fitted on station three that's principally the work in this area okay let's move on to station four and how many stations remind me did you say that there are in total we have a total of 11 stations over the whole line and the mechanical assembly process is completed over four of those stations of which this is number four this so is now station four and in station four all of the mechanical major parts have been fitted here now so this process is to run all of the pipe work and all of the cabling from where it originates to where it needs to end up and what we're saying then really if we look at the the, the day time or the days involved in this we've got three stations two days each so we're talking six days from start to here six days from start to here these this process is also another two days so after eight days of mechanical assembly the machine is then completed but we are very focused to continuing our efficiency process and our next phase will be to speed this line up again and our target is to get that two day cycle down to a one and a half day cycle. Okay, so now once we move on from here, let's say station four, what, what's happening up here then? I mean, I'm assuming the machine is pretty much, uh, uh, you know, it, you can see it here, it's, a, it, it's almost a, a finished article, it's is it? It's mechanically complete at this stage. The next thing to take place here will be the electrical commissioning process. Now we haven't actually started that yet on this machine but we will be starting at some point today and the electrical commissioning process can take anywhere between two, three, four days even sometimes depending upon the technicality of the software and the various other things that we have to do. But we balance that out so that it works out evenly in the flow process. So let's, if we, if we move further up the line because we're only sort of halfway up yet there are more machines in what appears to be in this position than obviously coming through station yes, one, two, yes. three and four. What, why is that? Because you're at that final stage? We're at that final stage now and at this point what we have to do is we have to start doing all the geometrical alignment on the machine. We have to do axis laser calibration to ensure the repeatability of the machine is correct. We then do our own independent geometrical alignment check with an independent uh, team of people that are purely focused to that and then the last part of the process is that we machine a standard NAS test piece which is inspected by us which gives the customer the guarantee of accuracy of the product. And then what happens with the Strothman call them uh, carriages. carriages at the end of it they go back to the start and then at they're the craned? The line, at the end of the line the carriage is lifted by our main bay crane carried all the way down the gangway and taken all the way back down to the bottom of the line to start for the next machine two days later. Two days later so we, we know from the start two days two days two days and then maybe yeah. more days here what, what's what's the start to finish time in total from a machine at station one right the way to the end there or out the door? Our plan is to achieve over that length of time within a 24 day period a complete process we do have a little bit of flexibility with that time dependent upon the delivery date for the customer but generally speaking it's around about that time. That is incredibly quick and incredibly efficient is it compared to how maybe other manufacturers I mean I've been around many European plants global plants there isn't many in the UK that are operating in this fashion is there? Not that I'm aware of no as far as I'm aware this is the only Strothman flow line system where a CNC machine tool manufacturer is building machines like this in the UK. And when you look at what this has done for the business efficiency wise, how, how much quicker is that 24 days compared to what it may have been before? Well we have, we have another flow line in the bay next to this bay. That is our original flow line and that has just uh, a set of carriages where we do the mechanical assembly only. When we first moved from what we call block assembly which is building the machine in one specific location to that flow line 
we saw an immediate 20% improvement. Now we've taken the whole process on another stage to the Strothman system where we do the whole cradle to grave process. Uh, we have made a further minimum 20% improvement on our assembly time, but we're not done yet. We've still got more improvements to make. As I said before, we're aiming for that one and a half day cycle and we're aiming to get that down even further. Uh, we have to get our machines to market as fast as we can. How about traceability moving down this line? Are you still conforming to everything when it comes to who's done what and uh, the, the, the stringent processes that you must have to maintain Absolutely. providing this quality? Absolutely. We still go through the same processes. Every stage of the assembly process of our machine is signed and documented by the individual person that has done that job. We have full traceability, we have ISO 9001 accreditation, and in order to achieve that, you have to have that type of traceability in place. This says a lot for UK manufacturing, doesn't it? When you look at often um, production lines and you talk about the automotive industry, the car industry, you're very much moving towards being like that in some ways, aren't we? Getting product out the door as quickly and as efficiently as possible. Absolutely. Henry Ford had it right, didn't he, all those years ago. And people still flow, assemble high volume products in that type of system. And we're just moving more and more towards it. And it would be wrong of us not to, to, to mention during this interview that actually what you're producing here isn't just your run of the mill machine tool. You are producing the, the ultimate in, in high precision, uh, high performance machines, aren't you? Absolutely. These are towards the top end of the CNC machine tool range that's available in the world today. Heller has a very high reputation for building quality and accuracy in their machines and we are very keen to maintain that. Is it open for customers to come and look at what we've seen here today? Because I can imagine, you know, they'd be beating your door down, wouldn't they? Engineers that love, love to look at how a machine goes together. They like to look at precision engineering, the nuts and bolts of it. They'd love to come here. Certainly it is. Our doors are open to anybody that wants to come and have a look. Please come and see us. Please come and see our facility. It would be my pleasure to show people around.